Hello everyone and welcome to my latest crash course video. Today we're going to be talking about multiplying and dividing decimals. Now let's talk about a few specifics now when we're talking about multiplying decimals. When we multiply decimals, as opposed to when we do addition and subtraction, we do not need to line up the actual decimal point in our problem. The thing that we do need to line up is the last digit in each of our factors. Now, let me show you as an example here. I'm going to set up my multiplication problem. I have 2 and 53 hundredths and 6 tenths. How I have the number lined up right now would not work for a typical multiplication problem. So we need to line up the last digit of both of our factors. Now the next thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to move the decimals out of the way before we can find the product. Let's talk about solving a problem now. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to move the decimal to make our factors whole numbers. We cannot multiply with decimals in our problem. So I'm going to get us set up here again and I have 2 and 53 hundredths and I have 6 tenths. The way that we are going to make our factors whole numbers is we're going to move that decimal to the right and we're going to count in between our place values in order to see how many times we have to move that decimal. So in my first factor I need to move the decimal one, two times. I've done two total moves of a decimal to make my factor whole. On my last factor I have to move that decimal place one time. So I've done one move there. It is important when we are multiplying decimals to know how many times we've moved that decimal out of the way because that information is going to come in handy later. And we have done a total of three moves of a decimal. Once those decimals are moved, we can solve this problem like a regular multiplication problem. So now I have 253 times 6. So I'm going to start with those last place values again. So 6 times 3 equals 18. So I'll need to carry my 1 up there. 5 times 6 equals 30, plus 1 equals 31, and I'll carry the 3. 6 times 2 equals 12, plus 3 equals 15. So now I have 253 times 6 equals 1,518. But we are not done solving this decimal multiplication problem yet. We need to move our decimal back into the product however many times we moved it from our factors. So you'll recall that we moved our decimal a total of three times. And any time that we have a whole number, you can assume that there's a decimal point hanging out at the end of it. So the way that we're going to move this decimal back into the problem is we're going to do the opposite of what we did before and we're going to move it to the left. We need to make this value smaller to account for our decimal. So we're going to move it to the left three places. So there's one, two, and three. So there is my decimal. So the answer to two and 53 hundredths times six tenths equals one and 518 thousandths. Now when we get to dividing decimals, things get a little bit different. Uh, let's say that we have a problem that has a divisor with a decimal in it. To solve a problem with a decimal in the divisor, we need to make that divisor a whole number. We cannot divide a number by a decimal because that is not a whole number. We have pieces of things that need to be accounted for. So to do this, we do the same that we've done in our multiplication problems and we're going to move that decimal point to the right. So I'm going to get a set up here and I have 1 and 2 tenths and we are dividing 24 and 6 tenths by 1 and 2 tenths. So very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take that decimal in my divisor and I'm going to move it to the right. This is going to make this a whole number so this gives me 12. Our next step in this problem is that we need to move our decimal in the dividend as well. Whatever we do to the divisor, we have to do to the dividend in these decimal dividing problems. So I have moved the decimal one place in my divisor. I have to move it the same amount of times in my dividend. So I am going to move that decimal to the right as well. So now I have 246 divided by 12. 
Now we can solve this problem like a regular long division problem. So my very first step, I'm going to see how many times 12 can fit into 2. Obviously 12 cannot fit into 2, so we're going to move to our next place value. I need to know how many times 12 can fit into 24, which is 2 times, because 12 times 2 equals 24. I'm going to subtract those two numbers, and that equals to 0. Now I need to bring my 6 down, and I need to know how many times 12 can go into 6. Obviously 12 can go into 6 0 times, and 12 times 0 equals 0. And so I have 6 left over. Once we get to this point, you'll notice that my decimal is still at the end of my dividend. I can assume that there is a zero hanging out on the end of there. Any whole number has an infinite amount of zeros that can continue after that decimal point. So now I can bring that zero down and I can continue my problem from here. And I need to know now how many times 12 can go into 60. 12 can go into 60 five times because 12 times five equals 60. And when I subtract 60 from 60, I have zero. I have finished solving this long division piece, but I still have one more step. We need to place the decimal in our quotient right above its placement in the dividend. We need to have that decimal accounted for in our answer. So that decimal place goes right above where it is in the dividend. And so the answer to 24 and 6 tenths divided by 1 and 2 tenths equals 20 and 5 tenths. I want to thank you guys again for checking into this crash course video. Check out some of the other ones that I have here on my YouTube channel, and I certainly hope that this has been a helpful tool for you. Happy mathing!